In this video, we will discuss the problem main coin. So the problem says that you'll be given a list of coins of distinct denominations and you'll be given a total amount of money. You have to find the minimum number of coins that are required to make up that particular amount and you have to output one. That is, you have to return one if you cannot make that particular amount using the coins that have been given to you. And the problem says you can assume that the coins that uh, the coins of each denominations are available in infinite number, right? So let's say if you have been given an amount as 11, right? So if you have been given an amount as 11 and you have been given the denominations as let's say 2, 4 and 6. So for this particular, uh, for such kind of case, you can see that let's say what you can do is, uh, let's say you start from this particular index, right? So you start from this particular index, right? And what you do is you see that you have the current amount as 11, right? So maybe if you choose this 6 only, right? So that means the amount reduces to 5 and the count of the coins will be 1, right? The count, uh, the number of coins that you have chosen is 1. Then what you can do is you can choose again, uh, let's say you move to this index and then what you can do is you can choose this, right? So if you choose uh, this 4, so that means that you have chosen two coins, that is one coin of value 6 and one another coin of value 4 and the amount changes to 1, right? Now you will see that uh, this 1 is not present, right? Uh, the value 1 is not present and which uh, whichever combination you put for yourself you will be able to observe that in the end uh, this one would remain right because there is not a coin of one denomination that is there right so that's why for this particular case when you cannot make this particular amount you will return a minus one simply right but when will you not return a minus one and when will you uh, see these cases right when will you try to find the minimum number of coins so let's say that if you have been given let's say uh, coins like one two and five in terms of denominations such that their infinite supply is available and you have been given the amount as let's say 11 so right what you can do is you can basically start from the last index right so basically let's say you start from the last index and you will try to observe right you can basically have a recursive kind of approach where what you can do is you if if it happens if it happens right if it happens that uh, current uh, let's say nums of i right nums of if the current uh, current nums of i minus 1 because let's say i is equal to n if you pass i is equal to n in this case so uh, this will be nothing but i minus 1 is index right so if your nums of i minus 1 is going to be lesser equal to amount so if the amount that you have if it is greater or equal to the current denomination then what you can do is you have two choices in this right either to choose this particular index right either you can choose this particular index and remain at the same same index at that time right so let's say you are at 11 right so either you can choose this denomination and the amount changes to 6 and you can again like you can stay here only because there is infinite supply present right so either you can uh, call a recursive call for uh, what either you can call a recursive call where amount uh, decreases by uh, nums of uh, i minus 1 right and i remains the same right uh, the index remains the same right that that is something that you can do or you can uh, like you can take and uh, you can take and remain at the same index right this is what you can do or what you can do is you can simply uh, you can simply move to the index that is you can call recursive function for i minus 1 you can move to this index right and then you can uh, not choose this particular uh, particular derivation and the amount will remain the same right these are the opportunities that you can have if the nums of i is lesser equal, if the current denomination is going to be lesser equal to the amount, right? So in that case, as I said, you can either take this particular index, right? Take this particular denomination such that your amount will change to amount minus nums of i minus one, and you can remain at this particular index only, right? Or what you can do is you can skip the skip this particular index that is five, and what you could do is you can simply move to the next index that is a uh, previous index that is i minus one, and the amount will remain the same, right? If it happens that i uh, the current denomination is lesser equal to the amount right otherwise otherwise there is another case that else else if happens that uh, the current denomination is greater right let's say the amount uh, left with you is let's say six and let's say the denominations that are given to you are like one uh, then let's say two let's say seven and eight right these are the denominations that have been given so in that case this and this denomination is not that something that you will choose right and what you will say is let's say you are currently standing at this particular denomination right your eye standing here so you will simply move back, right? Let's say you are you were starting from back. So now you will move to this index, right? Because you cannot take a denomination of seven because seven is greater than the amount, right? And you cannot take this particular coin, right? So that's why you will move back. So that is why what you will do is you will call recursively for nothing but uh, i minus one is index, right? Because you are moving back from this index, you are moving to this index, right? And what you will do is you will pass the same amount because the amount will not change, right? So this will be the recursive call. Now you can easily ob uh, observe this thing that there will be some base cases for this particular problem as well because this will be recursive call so what you can observe is if uh, if it happens that your i becomes zero right if the if you have uh, iterated through all the index let's say you were given denominations like one five and let's say seven and you started uh, your uh, from this then this then this and then you move to this right 
So basically what happened was like in this case you will pass i as n, right? So whenever you will be iterating a particular ith denomination, so that will be uh, used by uh, n nums of i minus 1, right? So if you your i changes to 0, right? And then in that case, you can say that the number of elements is exhausted, right? If your i changes to 0, and what happens is if the amount, if i changes to 0, if uh, if no elements are left and your amount is 0, right? If your amount is equal to 0, in that case, you will say that, okay, you have used one coin and you will return one, right? Otherwise, if it happens that your uh, uh, you have exhausted all the elements and the amount is not equal to 0, right? In that case, you will return maximum infinity kind of value, okay? Because in that case, you will say that it is invalid. This That particular recursive call becomes invalid, right? And another, another, another thing is that you can observe that basically what can happen is, uh, let's say what can happen basically is, that there will be indexes, right? There will be certain indexes, like as I told you, that you will be calling recursively for i, that is the index, and you will be calling for the amount, right? So it can happen that, uh, let's say, if you are in the if part, that if the current denomination is uh, lesser or equal to the amount, right? So in that case, either you can choose it. So if you choose this particular denomination, then what happens is, uh, you let's say you remain here only, you remain at the i index, and what you do is you your uh, uh, your you change this, you choose put this particular index, right? You choose this particular denomination. In that case, the amount will become amount minus nums of i, right? This is this is what it will become. Otherwise, if you don't choose it, then definitely it's gonna become what it. Uh, you will say that it's gonna be recursive call for i minus one, where the amount will remain the same, right? So you'll call recursively for i minus one and the amount will remain the same, right? So you can easily observe that since this will be a recursive call in nature, right? So there will be recursive call for this and this, then this and this. And similarly, there will be recursive call for this and uh, like for all the states, right? And in this case, the uh, growth can be exponential, right? But you want, you don't want your uh, complexity to be exponential, right? Because if, if let, let's suppose that there is a particular recursive call, right? Let's say if you talk about this recursive call, let's say I make it like this. Let's say there were some recursive calls that you were doing, right? And what happened with those recursive calls were, let's say these were the recursive calls that are made, right? And suppose that uh, in this recursive calls, there is a particular recursive call in the left subtree. Let's say there is a particular recursive call, let's say recursive of, let's say for the ith index, let's say i comma amount, right? There is a particular recursive call that is here and that has already been calculated, right? If there is a recursive call that has already been calculated, and let's say you see a recursive call, uh, the similar recursive call here as well, right? So will you calculate it? No, you will not calculate it, right? You will simply return the answer from here, right? Because you don't want to go into depth and calculate it if it is already calculated. That is how you can uh, you can skip this uh, recursive uh, call and you can uh, reduce, uh, change your time complexity from uh, exponential to kind of uh, n into k, right? That is what you can do. So let's quickly try and implement this particular DP approach and what we'll be doing in this particular approach. So what you will have is, first of all, you will declare a DP, right? Because you want you want to store all the states that are there, right? So DP of 101, because uh, the maximum number of uh, coins that can be given is 100, right? And the amount is what? 1001, uh, zero, right? So that is there. What you will do is, in the main function, first of all, you will try, you will basically, you what you will do is, you will first of all, initialize your DP to minus one, right? So you'll say that memset, Memset is used in C++ to initialize, it will initialize all the values of this particular DP, all the cells in this particular 2D DP to be uh, minus one, right? Indicating that the uh, that the value has not been calculated. So what you will do is you will say that DP of uh, minus one and size of DP, right? So that will initialize all the value to uh, minus one indicating that it has not been calculated. After this part is done, so what you will do is you will uh, check the size. So let's say int uh, n is equal to what? Nums dot size, right? You will pass the size as well and what you will do is you will call it recursively right so you will uh, you, what you will do is you will call a recursive function for what you will call a recursive function for nums comma n that is the size right that is the index and the amount the initial amount will be passed in this particular recursive call right and after this part is done so you will check right if if you are in a dp right so basically if you are using dp so dp of what dp of n and amount will tell you that okay whether it is possible or not if it's equal equal to let's say int max right if it's equal equal to int max let's say minus one in that case what you will do is you will simply uh, return what you will simply return a minus one indicating that it's not possible else otherwise if it's possible so you'll re simply return nothing but uh, dp of n and amount right that is what you will do and we'll now implement this particular recursive function so this is what you will do in this part right and you will uh, have a minus one as well right after this part is done, so what you'll have is you'll have a recursive function. So let's say I name it as int recursion, right? 
and what I'll have be having in this particular function is I'll pass nothing but vector int uh, nums right I'll pass the nums uh, vector and I'll pass int i that is the index initially it is pointing to n so that means if I if my i is equal to n so that means if I want to uh, go uh, iterate the if I want to access the last element so that will be nothing but i minus 1th index right because if this, it is n so n minus 1 will be the uh, will be the index right if I pass the value right so uh, I'll be having the int amount as well that will be telling me about the amount after the after this part is done so what i'll check is i need to check that if it happens that my i is equal to zero right if the index is zero and my amount and my what happens my amount is also equal to zero right in that particular case i will uh, simply return a one why i will return one because it will indicate that okay this uh, the amount has uh, the, like i have exhausted all the indexes and my amount has uh, reduced to zero so that means i have made that particular amount right after this is done so what i will say is that if n value is 0 say so suppose n value is 0 and the amount and the amount is not equal to uh, 0 right if the amount is not 0 so that means in this particular case i need to return i need to return nothing but int uh, int max minus 1 right basically it means that this will be an invalid state right because in this case all the elements were exhausted as well and i was not able to uh, reduce the amount to 0 that means i was not able to make the particular derivation in this case i'll return int max indicating that it is invalid this particular recursive call was invalid because i will always be taking the minimum right out of all each and every recursive call another thing that i need to check is if dp of i and amount right if dp of i and amount uh, is not equal to minus one right if it's already calculated if it's already calculated then that means that i will return it right i'll simply return dp of i and amount right that is that is something that i'll do after this part is done so i need to see that i need to see what i need to see that since uh, since i have passed n in the index so you can see that if n is passed right if i is equal to n so in that case if i want to ch uh, check for the last element so last element will be what uh, if uh, i value is n so last element will be i, I minus 1 right if nums of i minus 1 is lesser equal to amount right if the current denomination is lesser equal to the amount right if the amount is greater equal to the current denomination then i have two choices right i have two choices what i have is in let's say i have choice one right i have choice one as uh, if i have choice one that what i can do is i can simply call the recursive call right i can simply call the recursive call in which i can pass the nums and i can move to the another index right i can i i choose i don't choose this particular index right i don't choose this particular denomination and i move to the to, uh, move to the next uh, next uh, denomination and my amount remains the same right this is one thing that can happen another thing that can happen is in uh, choice two right choice in the choice two what can happen is i recursively call uh, with the nums and i choose this particular it index right and i remain at this particular it index at the same time so let's say i remain at this particular it index only and what i do is uh, i choose this particular denomination in that case my amount will re get reduced by nums of i minus one right so that is what i can do and in this case if i'm choosing this particular uh, this particular denomination then that means that uh, in this case if i'm choosing this particular coin of the particular denomination nums of i minus one in that case i can say that i i'm choosing one coin so that's why i'll add one to the answer as well right and what i what i will say is that what i need to return from this particular recursive call is i need to return the minimum every time right from each and every recursive call i need to return the minimum so uh, what i can say is i need to return the minimum out of the choice one comma choice two right that is something that i want to do but before that right before that i can simply say that what i can say is that i need to store it in, in, as well right so let's say i store it in a variable let's say uh, let's say result right i can store it uh, this recursive calls value and after that i can simply return in terms of dp right so basically first of all i can store it so i can say that uh, nothing but dp of i and amount right dp of i amount is equal to what uh, dp of i amount will be equal to nothing but uh, the result and after that i can simply return this particular uh, dp state right dp of i and amount right i can, I can simply return it uh, like that is something that i can do and another thing that i could do is uh, if if it happens that the current denomination that i am at if it is uh, greater than the amount right so in that case i cannot i cannot choose it right so in that case i only have one choice and that is uh, what choice i have uh, so in choice that i have is nothing but calling recursively right in which i pass uh, the nums uh, nums array and what i do is i move to the next index right i move to the next index indicating that since i'm moving from right to left in the array so that means uh, i'll move to i minus one uh, element right and what i will what i can say is that i have to i haven't choose so the amount remains the same right and in this case also i'll say that dp of i and amount right i and amount will get changed to what uh, will be equal to the choice right that is what will happen 
and after this part is done so i'll simply call uh, i'll simply return dp of i and amount for this particular recursive state as well right so that is what i'll be doing let's quickly try and compile this particular code so we are having some compilation issues it is saying that n is equal to zero yes in this case i need to have i is equal to zero right uh, let's quickly compile it again it seems to work on the sample set is giving the output as three let's quickly submit this code as well so you can see that our solution was able to pass all the 205 test cases that were there and this is how you can implement it using the dynamic programming approach basically you can mark all the states as minus one then you pass what you pass the nums array that is the denomination array you pass the n like because in this case you will try to move from either you can try to move from uh, uh, left to right in the now in the denomination array or you can try to move from uh, the right to left that is from n till the starting right and you will pass the amount and if it happens that the final amount is also infinity kind of thing right in that case you will return minus one otherwise you will return what you will return the uh, uh you will return what is the minimum number of denominations right and I, as i've told you that there can be two choices if the current amount is uh, lesser equal to, if the current denomination is lesser equal to the amount then either I, you can remain at the same index and you can choose it or you and you can decrease the amount by nums of i minus one or what you can do is you can move to the move to the next index that is i minus one th index and your amount remains the same right and what you will be doing is you will be choosing the minimum out of the two choices right and you will uh, put that in the uh, dp as well and after that you will simply return from that particular state and another choice can be that what you could do is you can simply have this thing that uh, if the current denomination is greater than the amount then in that case you will be skipping this particular denomination and in this case you will be moving to the uh, you will moving to the next denomination that is i minus one denomination right and in this particular problem the time complexity the overall time complexity of this particular approach since we are using a dp kind of approach so the overall time complexity will be nothing but n into amount right so and the space complexity for this particular approach is also going to be nothing but n into amount right that is uh, that is what i did uh, because we are using a dp right so that is uh, what is going to happen in this particular question thanks a lot for watching this particular video make sure to hit the like button thank you